Today we are exploring object.create, what it is, why it exists and how to use it. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I am your host MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. First of all, what is object.create? Object.create is a static method on the object prototype that creates a new object with the prototype set to a certain object. But that, that's a very long explanation and even though I wrote it and I read it, I got bored halfway and so now. Let's instead have a look at what it does. Let's say that we are writing an enterprise grade application and we have a normal object that exists in such applications, such as a cat. Let's run that. Uh, no, uh, I'm calling this uh, file object create sample JS, and it says <laughs> that cat is sick. That is fine, but we want multiple uh, uh, types of cats in our application that sounds different. So we um. Alright, uh, I'm gonna run that node.objectcreatesample.js. I'm gonna make one more cat. Run that. No, dot object create sample. What? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot the JS. And. Cats, 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 cats. Let's walk through this. So, we're creating a, a simple object here. This is nothing special or wonderful about this object. It's just an object literal with a uh, with a method or a, a property that we set to a function, uh, which is bytes. Then we can call it a method. And the console.log, it logs out the uh, property sound on whatever this is. Down here we call make sound. Uh, so that means it will go into this and it's gonna uh, uh, come to this line here and it's gonna pick out whatever sound is. And we have set sound here on this line. We'll set the sound of mark to move. And that is why it logs out sound. If the concept of this uh, confuses you, uh, you might want to check out the previous episodes in this uh, series on object creation in JavaScript. You can find a playlist with all the episodes in, uh, in the description of this video. So check that out. If you watch the series, you should be familiar with everything up to this point. What you don't know is what this does. What is this? What is happening inside of object.create? What kind of sorcery does this do? Object.create creates a new object with the prototype set to a certain object. So this object.create will create a completely new fresh object and uh, it will set the prototype of that object to be cat. Let's verify that. Um, I'm gonna write console.log is mark a cat. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to call mark dot is prototype of cat. 
I'm gonna run that node dot object create sample dot js false oh uh, i did not expect that oh okay it's because I'm, I'm 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 thinking in backwards land so this does not make sense uh i'm asking if mark is a prototype of the cat which it mark isn't it's the cat that is the prototype of mark Mark is being derived or copied or whatever you like to th how, however you like to think uh, from the cat. So it should be cat is a prototype of, of Mark. Is cat the prototype of Mark? And now I run that again and you see that is Mark a cat? Well, true. I accidentally said there before that uh, Mark and, and Waffles are, are copies of the cat, which is not, uh, not true. That's an incorrect way of thinking about it. What Waffles and Mark are is uh, new objects that uh, don't have the property make sound themselves, but they have a reference to a prototype, a cat, and whenever we ask for something like make sound that does not exist on Waffles and Mark themselves, they uh, delegate that call to their prototype and ask the prototype, if, do you have the method uh, make sound and if so call that. In a little bit, we're going to look at how to use object.create, but first I want to talk about why object.create exists in the first place. What's the purpose of this thing? Well, object.create is more natural to the prototype model than the new keyword. So in previous episodes, we looked at how to apply the new keyword to a function in order to simulate something that looked sort of like classes. And that way was for a long time the, the de facto or the, the standard way of, of creating objects in JavaScript. It was a kind of sort of class. The problem was that it, it, it kind of looked like a class, but it looked really weird. And it had a bunch of quirks that just didn't really make sense uh, from the standpoint of what you expected of a class. So Douglas Crockford, uh, which you might know for being the author of JavaScript The Good Parts, uh, he also did uh, JS Lint. You can think of Douglas Crockford as the grumpy grandfather of JavaScript. And he was annoyed with the uh, state of object creation in JavaScript, so he wrote object.create as an attempt to make something that uh, was more in line with how the prototype worked, like something that made a little more sense and didn't try to pretend being something that it's not, you know, a class. And Douglas Crockford, uh, being a person that has a significant uh, influence on the JavaScript community, uh, managed to get uh, object.create into the language itself. So object.create is built into JavaScript even though it wasn't at first. The more inquisitive student might notice that we have been setting the prototype directly in earlier episodes. We have just created objects and then doof, dot, just setting the prototype. Why, uh, why introduce object.create? Why doesn't that just make things more complicated? And yes, it does. Uh, object.create uh, jumbles together the creation and the, uh, of the object and setting of the prototype, but uh, set prototype of and messing with the prototype directly on existing objects is a very bad idea from a performance standpoint. It makes it very hard for the JavaScript engine to uh, optimize the speed of your application, which defeats the purpose of using the prototype in the first place. So in real life, we never use set prototype of and we never assign new prototypes to object like we did in previous episodes. Set prototype of is very nice when explaining the concept of a prototype, but in a real life application, you should not be using it. You should be using object.create. Which brings us to how to use object.create. But before we do, I'm going to take a walk and a lunch break. Yeah, all right. 
In the last week, I've gotten uh, a bit addicted to the uh, video Q&A app Whale. I've been answering a lot of questions on Whale. This morning, I answered this one by Tong Shi. How do you handle ideas about the things that you can solve with your programming skills? And what stops you from turning said solution into a business? Man, this question hits close to home for me. This is a huge problem for me. Uh, I have like a million ideas all the time and uh, being a programmer you see that oh, I could solve this problem with software so easily and it would benefit so many people if if there just was a piece of software that solved this. Oh. And this line of thinking has caused me to start easily 30 projects. But I stopped myself from uh, doing that nowadays uh, because those projects never amount to anything. The reason these projects uh, almost never amount to anything is that launching a software product is not just coding it. It is uh, building a business around it, creating a business model, uh, investing in that business, uh, launching that product, marketing that product, and then over time maintaining and uh, and running that business. Building the software is a tiny, tiny bit of all that work. So now whenever I think of this awesome software idea that would change the life of a couple of people and it would be really great, I ask myself, hmm, am I really willing to spend the next uh, one or two years of my life focus on, focusing on this thing because that is honestly what it would take to, to make it happen. And usually that is not the case. It's, the ideas are often not that great. I really don't like when people say that, oh, I have so little time. Time is the only thing that we have in abundance. Like it's this huge resource of, of, of ours that gets replenished every single day. So if you have that feeling that, oh, there's so little time, I'm so busy, then the problem is not really the amount of time that you have. You have vast amounts of it. The problem is how you spend that time. In case you're new to this channel, I live in Sweden and I'm also stereotypically close to IKEA or IKEA as it would be said in Swedish. And this is where I'm going to eat lunch because lunch is a dirt cheap here. All right, we're back. How to use object.create. We're back to the example that we had before. Uh, I'm going to clear the console. A great way to understand tools, you know, libraries uh, or, or built-in functions is to just try to re-implement them. So that is what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna create object.create and we're gonna call it object.create. Let's do it. Hey. Okay, so what arguments does our object create function take? Well, it takes a prototype. Let's just call that proto uh, because I think that uh, prototype is probably a reserve keyword. I don't know, but I'm guessing. Object.create actually takes a second uh, object, second argument uh, that is uh, a properties object. We are not gonna deal with that today. It's not really related to how object create works and you don't need it to understand this. And I honestly don't think you need it, period. The first thing that object.create does internally is to create uh, an object. Just a simple object. And then it's going to set the prototype of that object. So we use the uh, set prototype of uh, and we're going to set the prototype of the object to our proto and then we're going to return the object. Let us run that node object create sample dot oh I keep forgetting the JS. Oh uh, yes and it still gives the same output as before. So if we take a look here at object create like what this does. So check this out 
creates a new object here, creates a new object, and it then sets the prototype of that object to a certain object, which in this case is, is, is proto. That's it. That's the gist of what object create does. But we're not going to use the set prototype of because that is horrible from a performance standpoint. And performance is again why we're using the prototype in the first place. Uh, so we're going to do object.create here. Yes. When using object.create in, in real life, you uh, like this seems this this implementation might seem raw to a lot of people and that is because it, it is if this was a class this in initialization here this would probably be part of some constructor if this was a real object there would probably be a lot more uh, functionality and setup that goes on here and probably some conditionals and some checks for uh, that you've set uh, all the cat anatomy so where do you put constructor logic because object that object dot create there is no space for a constructor and the most common pattern is to simply just use an init function like init da, 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 function and just like a constructor you would here provide the data that is needed to construct the cat for instance sound and then you'd go set this dot sound equals sound I know this is a contrived example. You just have to imagine that the init function actually contains more logic. I forgot a comma there. And now we'll replace this sound uh, assignment here with init. There. And the same thing down here. Init. We run that again to make sure that it works as before. Yes, we get the same output. A handy pattern here is to just return this uh, because then you can chain these calls and do object create dot cat. Now we just delete here. Blah, blah. Do the same thing here. I'll just bang 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 a new line and I run that again. Same output and that is it. Object.create is a uh, very simple, straightforward way uh, to create objects that uh, use prototypes. Object.create, it's nice, it has great CPU and memory characteristics. Uh, and as long as you understand how the, what the prototype is, this is a very straightforward and nice pattern. If anything was confusing, please post a question down in the comments. If it wasn't confusing, please help out the person that just posted that question in the comments. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. If you're new, welcome. This is a programming show and I post new episodes every Monday morning 0800 GMT. You have just watched an episode that was a bit tutorial-like, but I also do these other musings episodes where uh, I'm that are more thought pieces where I uh, talk about architecture, working in a team, productivity and stuff like that. You can check that out in this playlist. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.